So now in this video, we're going to look at this circuit in detail. There's the schematic. We have a 555 timer wired in a stable mode. And so, as you can see, we got the output. It's flashing a brief high signal, and then it's low for a while, over and over again. Now, this is controlled by a light dependent resistor though so I can set the speed by how much light I put on the light dependent resistor less light it goes slower more light it goes faster I can take a flashlight and give a real bright light on there and you can see it uh, starts flashing so fast it's kind of getting close to where it flashes fast enough it looks like it is steadily on so any case I am going to uh, turn the power supply off. I'm using the portable power supply here, and I plug it in there. It has alligator clips there. I clipped them to jumper wires, put them to the rail, and then made a couple other jumper wires so that if I power that rail, that rail is powered. So I'm going to turn the uh, power off on that. And uh, we're going to quickly yank these and then go through the build really quick. So, not a whole lot to this. And, uh, so it shouldn't take uh, too long to uh, take it apart and put it back together. So first off, let's get rid of this capacitor. We can actually do without this capacitor, but it's a good idea to put the capacitor in there. So we have some jumpers already on the board. So that is pin number one right there. We got one, two, three, four, working our way down. And then we jump across five, six, seven, eight right there. So eight is to the positive rail right there five volts and then one is to the negative rail as you can see there so that powers it and also internally we are looking at one third and two thirds of the power supply voltage so there's a voltage divider in there and this capacitor helps steady that voltage that is uh, one of the main things so uh, pin four that's the reset pin and uh, so we got our control voltage as I said we'll use a capacitor to study that our ground pin one the uh, positive pin there pin four is the reset pin we don't want it to do anything it's waiting for a low signal so if we put it to the positive rail it will never get a low signal it will never do anything and uh, that's what we want in this circuit for that and so now we come to the capacitor there again it's a control voltage it can change the uh, voltage that uh, that reacts and just to kind of avoid giving it false signals or whatnot to study things we can just put a 10 nanofarad same as a 0 0.01 microfarad uh, capacitor so it may say 10 nanofarad or 0 0.01 microfarad is that value doesn't matter either we're just giving it a, a steady voltage and so now that takes care of that we are going to monitor two voltages so let's get that out of the way right now so this is the trigger pin pin number two is the trigger pin and then we got the threshold pin pin number six they're both monitoring for a voltage and we want to make sure they are the same voltage so here's a jumper I made and we connect them directly right there so they will always be monitoring the same voltage which will ultimately be what the capacitor is charged or discharged to now we're gonna go to the positive rail and then pin 7 it's a discharge pin sometimes it's connected to ground sometimes it's basically an open switch that's what it does so it can discharge the capacitor and also take whatever current gets through this resistor and put it directly to ground so we're going to use a 220 ohm resistor and I'm going to put it right on the end there so that's pin 7 the discharge pin now we're going to take the uh, light dependent resistor and put that from pin 7 to pin 6 as you can see in the diagram I drew it together and uh, there we go I'll try to get it pointing towards the light a bit so so that wire can touch that resistor but that one I don't want to uh, touch anything except for the capacitor that we're gonna add soon so before we add the capacitor 
because it's large and obnoxious, we're gonna put the diode right here. So it's just a rectifier diode. The anode, the side without the stripe, goes to pin 7. The cathode, the side with the stripe, goes to pin 6. And so, what this will do is we will have the 220 ohm resistor, having more positive here, will have a path through the diode there to the positive side since it is an electrolytic capacitor. This side has to be more negative, that side more positive. So it will come towards the more positive side of the capacitor and charge it up right there. When the capacitor discharges, it cannot discharge that way. You can see we got the, the uh, discharge pin going to ground. It can't go through that way, so it has to go through the light dependent resistor. So the light dependent resistor is actually only really determining how long it takes the capacitor to discharge. So we're going to put the positive side where the light dependent resistor and the cathode right there, pin number six, the threshold pin are. And so again, it's electrolytic, We've got 470 microfarad, and uh, so the uh, more negative side, the side with the dash is going to go there, and I'll just kind of bend it out of the way so we can see a little bit there. So really, that's it for this circuit. We could take a multimeter and see the voltage change if we wanted to, but it is better, in my opinion, to uh, have a flashing LED. So what we're going to do, pin 3 right there. That is the output pin. We're going to take a 220 ohm resistor because we're dealing with 5 volts. And uh, we could use a higher value resistor. The LED just won't be as bright. Now we're going to take the LED and uh, just like the diode, we got the anode here. The cathode is the side with the dash. So with the uh, LED, you know the cathode because you got a shorter lead. The anode, you have a longer lead right there and uh, the cathode probably won't see it but uh, it does have a flat edge on the cathode side right there it's curved all the way around but there's a little flat edge right there on the cathode side if you have cut the leads or something not all of them do have that flat edge though but this one does so in any case long lead the anode to the resistor short lead the cathode down here and that is it for wiring it up right there we will turn the power on we should see that the LED is flashing once I get that on so we have it flashing we get it darker the flashing takes longer and uh, as we saw before we get it brighter the flashing goes quicker so one modification we can make as we just saw it doesn't have to get terribly bright. I can just use a shadow of my finger before it starts going quite slow. So we're going to swap out the 470 microfarad capacitor with the 47 microfarad capacitor. And so it's going to charge faster with the 220 ohm resistor. But more importantly, it is going to discharge quicker also. So there you can see how fast it's going with that light. And we get it uh, darker. It's a more reasonable pulse right there. And if the uh, red LED does not look uh, good enough, not bright enough, I should say, we can take a green LED or a blue LED. That should be uh, quite a bit brighter. So there you can see right there. And in darker conditions, it's a more reasonable pulse right there we can turn that down. Now, the LED is lighting up when we have a pulse. So, unless it got really, really bright, our light dependent resistor is going to have quite a bit more resistance than this fixed uh, resistor. With the uh, lamp though, that's probably not the case. If we get uh, this bright of a light on there, then it's probably lower resistance than the 220 ohm resistor. But for the most part, the 220 ohm resistor is more uh, resistance and so that charges relatively quick compared to the discharge so the output is high for a brief period of time right there and uh, so what I'm going to do I'm actually going to go back to the 470 microfarad capacitor 
right there to uh, kind of slow things down, get it, get a little brighter. So another option that we have is is that uh, leaving the setup the same way that we have it now, instead of putting the load to the negative rail, we could have it go to the positive rail. And what that means is that the LED will be lit up well it is a low output right there so we can do that quickly just put the along lead the anode to this jumper that goes to the positive rail and shuffle this uh, resistor here to the cathode of the uh, resistor and my aim's a little off there we go so now you can see it's high or the LED is on a lot more than it is off and we can also take another 220 ohm resistor here and go towards the negative rail like we did before with that 220 ohm resistor the lead is bending a little out of the way and there we go that went in there and now we have two LEDs flashing. So you can see the red LED, it flashes when the green LED turns off and vice versa right there. So the green LED is mostly on because we have a low signal it's on the more positive side. Also the more positive side the output goes to the negative rail. This is an NE555 timer it does not go all the way to the positive rail when you get a high output. Green LEDs are just naturally brighter. So it makes sense to, uh, if you're using the same value resistor as we are here, 220 ohm resistor to protect the LEDs, it makes sense to put the green LED, since it's just naturally brighter, even with less current, on the more uh, negative side, because you'll have less positive voltage coming there than negative voltage in relationship to the rails. So, in any case, that's really about it for this circuit. We can make a light dependent, uh, A-stable mode, 555 timer, right there. That simple. So, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.